Hey y'all, today I have got the perfect low carb taco wraps. They are absolutely delicious. So if you're watching your sugar or maybe you're diabetic, this is the video for you. And that's what we're going to do today on Old Fashioned Southern Cooking. <laughs> y'all welcome back once again to old-fashioned southern cooking i've got another delicious recipe for y'all and i'm gonna tell you wraps are our favorite in the spring and summertime we still eat them in the winter but we love a good wrap and we eat a lot of those during the spring and summer because they're easy and they're light and nothing real heavy um, so today i thought i would share our taco wraps with y'all and the best part is like i said they are low carb Okay, so I'm going to run through the list of ingredients that you're going to need to make these easy taco wraps, all right? First of all, you're going to need some hamburger. I use the 80-20, but y'all use whatever uh, the fat content of hamburger that y'all like, um, but we always use the 80-20, so you're going to need about a pound, right about a pound of that, okay? Next, you're just going to need to dice you up some lettuce. You're going to need to dice you up a tomato, and you're going to need some shredded cheddar cheese is what we use, but you can use the cheese of your choice. You're going to need some taco sauce. Now, this is the Taco Bell hot sauce. Um, I actually run out of the bottle of the mild, but I do have some packets when we did go to Taco Bell. I save their, their little packets because they come in handy just for... Uh, days like this when I run out of my mild well, I've got some of it on hand that I can use if I don't want to you know put the hot sauce on there so that's what we use and then if you want to but you don't have to we're going to use a little bit of sour cream on our wrap you are going to need one packet of the McCormick mild taco seasoning and lastly you're going to need some low-carb wraps. Now, I'll tell y'all, these are whole wheat, and I buy these at Aldi's, and they are really, really good, y'all, I'm telling you. And the price, I think these are like $2.99. I mean, you can't beat that for low-carb wraps. Now, I will tell y'all, if any of y'all are wondering, I will tell you, on the back of the Nutrition Facts of these low-carb wraps, the actual carb content that's in these for one of them is 18 carbs, okay? And then they have 0 0.5 grams of sugar. Now, in order to get them down to four net carbs, all you got to do is look at your fiber. And if it says, this one says 14 grams of fiber, you take that 14 and you subtract it from the total carb amount in the wrap. That's how you do that if y'all didn't know that. So, that brings it down to four net carbs. Just like it says here on the front, 60 calories, four net carbs, high in fiber. Anything like that, y'all, that's high in fiber is really good and you can subtract your uh, carbs. But um, anyway, and these have no trans fat or anything like that in them. So um, they're perfect. We, we really like them. So I just thought I'd share that with y'all if any of y'all out there didn't know how to do that. That's how you subtract your carb content is look at the fiber. The more fiber, the better off you are as far as lowering that carb uh, amount. Okay? All right. We got that out of the way. So what I do is I start off by taking my hamburger. I put it into my pot and I boil my hamburger on the stove. Now I do that, I've done it for so many years because it makes it a little healthier that way because when you boil it, you can strain it and you can, and I even rinse my uh, hamburger off after I'm done boiling, I strain it y'all in my mesh strainer. What I do is I rinse it off with really hot water to help me get rid of some of that um, extra grease that may be in it. And I just kind of toss it around as I'm I'm rinsing it off. And it really does help to get rid of that extra grease, okay? You can fry it if that's how you want to do it. But I will tell you this, if you fry it, you really need to drain that extra grease off that burger as much as you can. 
because when you put it onto your wrap, you're going to find out it may make it pretty soggy pretty fast. So that's why I rather boil my hamburger. It's still going to probably make it a little bit soggy, but there's nothing you can do about that, especially when you put it on a wrap. But it's not going to be as bad as if I would have fried my hamburger and had all that extra grease, okay? Okay, y'all, so what we're going to do, like I said, is I'm going to get my hamburger out now. I freeze a lot of meat. Y'all probably know that I've probably referenced that in other videos. I freeze a lot of meat, so I wrap my burger in saran or my press and seal, which actually I've been kind of trying the press and seal out to see if I like it better than the saran, but I think I like my saran better, but I still like my press and seal for certain things. So I freeze it, I bring it out, and I just unthaw it in some cold water in a big pot. And I get it unthawed that way instead of trying to put it in the microwave. And, the, and even if you put it on defrost, sometimes it wants to try to cook it. So I don't never like doing that. I, I'm just going to run some water in here. And then we're going to break it up as soon as I get my water in here. But you don't want to put a whole lot. I put right about uh, maybe, maybe half. Right before I get to them little rivets or whatever they call those little things in this pot. <laughs> I think it's what they're called. Um, and then I just use my hands. My hands are clean. And I just start breaking this burger up. Now, part of this is a little bit frozen down inside of it, a little bit still. So I just take it and break it on up with my hands. I've got a meat, uh, one of them meat, uh, I don't know, meat chopper or whatever they say it's called. But I don't really care for them too much. I'm just going to be honest with you all. Sometimes for certain things, they're, they're nice to have. But. I think we've got it all broke up in there. And I'm going to wash my hands again. All right. Once you get your hamburger broke up into your pot, take it over your stove, put it on your stove, and start it out on high. Okay. But when you start to see your hamburger start to boil, it's going to start puffing up like on top. And it'll look like almost like a foamy stuff on top of it. When you see it do that, you need to continue to stir it, but you need to back your heat down to probably right about medium. If you don't do that, it can boil over and it will be a gigantic mess. <laughs> you don't want to do that. So just keep an eye on it. Keep stirring it, you know, down like this because it wants to make like bigger chunks of hamburger. So you have to keep continuing to uh, mash it up to keep it into fine pieces. See what I'm saying? I don't know if it makes any sense to y'all or not. But when I get it cooked, I'll show you the consistency of, of what we like. If you'd like your hamburger chunky like that, don't stir it as often. Okay? So, I'm going to put this on the stove, and um, I'll be back here shortly, and uh, we'll move on. All right, y'all. I got you over here at my stove. Uh, like I said, turn your heat on high. I thought I'd just bring y'all here and show you real quick what I was talking about. So, you know, get your heat on high and let it come to that boil. But during the process... You do need to keep stirring it, and I take me just a some kind of rubber spatula, and I just keep doing this to it back and forth, just to kind of make sure that hamburger stays broke, you know, broken up. So when that when this heats up, the hamburger just wants to get uh, stick together a little bit and become, you know, bigger chunkier pieces. So if you want it to be a finer consistency or a finer texture, I should say, you need to continue to stir this. Um, until you get it down to where, you know, it's okay on its own. And, and you'll know, you will know when it's okay to, to leave it for just a little bit. It don't take hamburger very long to cook. Um, when this, usually how I do mine, I don't start timing mine until it comes to that boil. And when it comes to that boil, then I will start timing it. Um, and I usually boil mine just to be on the safe side. I usually boil mine for anywhere between 25 to 30 minutes just to make sure that that hamburger is completely done. That's one thing with us. We do not like raw meat. <laughs> um, you know, like steaks and all that. We don't like no pink and nothing. So that's just us and that's just how we do it. So we're just going to let this go and we're going to let it boil. And when it gets to that part of that, to where I tell y'all it's kind of got that frothy stuff on top, whatever you want to call it, um, I'll bring y'all back and I'll show you what I'm talking about, okay? But it's going to take it a few minutes before it gets to that uh, point, okay? So anyway, 
I will be back here shortly. See how that's starting to foam on top and boil up a little bit? Then is when is you know your hamburger can get a little chunky on you. Um, stir it like this and just keep doing like I, t I told you earlier. Because when it gets to this point is when you need to back your heat down. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and back our heat down. I'm going to back it down to medium on my stove. And all you got to do is just keep it stirring. Okay, until you feel like you've gotten, you know, your hamburgers broke up in there pretty good. And, and like I said, if you don't get it broke up good enough, you can always do it after you strain it when it cools down with your hands. Um, I've done it myself before when I've kind of forgotten about to stir it. <laughs> I get sidetracked sometimes, y'all, so y'all have to overlook me. <laughs> I really do. So all we're going to do is we're going to set our timer. I'm going to go ahead and do 30, y'all, just to make sure. I just like to be sure that my burger is done. And that is for all y'all out there that's never boiled your hamburger. I know there is some new cooks and you know, you're just learning things, so that's why I kind of try to explain it to you in detail, and I know for a lot of you other people out there that's been cooking for years and years like I have, I know it probably gets a little irritating hearing me say that, you know, in detail about things, but, but remember, there is some new cooks, and sometimes they just don't understand it as much as what we all do that's cooked for several years, you know, we've all had to learn, so... Anyway, like I said, when I get this strained and everything, I'll be back and we'll go ahead and start getting our stuff, uh, our taco seasoning put in here and get it set to the side and then we can get our tomato and our lettuce cut up. So I'll be back shortly. All right, y'all, while the hamburger's cooking, let's go ahead and get our tomato diced up. I washed this off really good. Now, y'all do it however you want to. I take me a little bitty knife. I cut the center and I take my knife down in there pretty far. And then I just cut around in a circle on my tomato on the top. The reason I do that is, is I want to get rid of the uh, core. See there how that core come out of that tomato? That's how I core mine. I mean, y'all do it however you want to, like I said, but that's how um, I core my tomato. All right. Once you get your uh, core out of the inside of your tomato, I turn mine up like this. And then there's a little end on your tomato, and I just take it off, and I just start icing it up. We got our tomato diced. It's ready for our wraps. Got it in this little bowl, put the lid on here, and I'm going to put this in the refrigerator in just a minute, but I'm going to get my uh, cutting board cleaned up, then I'm going to bring my lettuce and get it out so we can go ahead and get some of that cut up too, okay? So I'll be back in just a minute. I've got some lettuce here. I'm going to take my kitchen scissors. i got to get a pair of kitchen scissors. These are getting to be dull. Um, I'm going to open this up, take this off. And I've got me a gallon size freezer bag. Of course, I'm not going to put it in the freezer. I just prefer to store my stuff like this in a, in a freezer bag. So, it looks pretty good. There's some spots. This brown there will have to get off. I'm telling you, I've seen so many ways of people taking the core out of their lettuce. Some people say to womp it, <laughs> which that's great. If it comes out, you know, that way for you, do it that way. you got to do it what works for you. Now... This is how I do it, and this is what works for me. Do be careful if you do do it this way, okay? Because I don't want to buy getting cut. So, how I take the core out, I'll start about where that yellow stuff is, and I'll take me about that size of a knife. I need one to get down in there, because we're going to pull that core out. I take, put my knife in there, and I go around it. Same thing as I did with the tomato to get the core out of it. I run around all the spots. I see bad spots. I try to run around where those are so I can pull them out as well on top here. And then I just meet back up on the other side. I go around one more time just to make sure that we can get that core loosened up in our lettuce. And I can tell that it is. So all you want to do is grab it, pull it out just like that. There you go. That's your core. Of your lettuce. That's simple. You just have to be careful when you're doing it. 
I just don't like hitting it. That's just me. I don't know why. I just don't like doing it that way. <laughs> we all have our ways. I'm going to turn that over upside down and let whatever's in there fall out into the garbage can. Now look at there. We have a beautiful head of lettuce. The core is completely out, so we're ready to go. Now, you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I do. I wash my head of lettuce off. I just don't trust it. So let me wash this off, and I'll be right back. You don't want to use a lot of water pressure when you go to um, wash your lettuce off because it can tear off some of your layers if it's too hard of a pressure. So I just barely turn mine on, but I do get it good. Wash it out on the inside and everything. And then turn it upside down and shake it in your sink and get rid of all that excess water because that water gets in between the layers of your lettuce. What I do is I lay it down like this. I just take me a few paper towels and I just kind of blot it, I guess you'd say, dab it off, try to get as much of the excess water as I can. And um, everybody stores their lettuce different, too. And then people say there's certain ways to do it. And I've tried a lot of different ways. But the way that I, I do it here that works for me is putting it in that bag. And I try to get as much air out of it as I can with the straw. But I'll show y'all when I get to that point. Now, this top piece, we're going to have to go ahead and get rid of it. So just take it and pull it off is all you got to do because of the brown. Y'all may not be able to see that, but I'm telling you, that's not good. So I'm looking for some more pieces that we might have to take off. It looks like this one's going to have to come off too because it's got a big brown spot down here. I hate that, but it is what it is. You can't always get lettuce perfect. I know that anymore in these stores. I look at this lettuce and I think to myself, my goodness. You know, the way some of them look is just horrible. And then you got to go through all of them, try to find one that looks good. You know, we don't want to buy lettuce that looks awful. So, or that looks like it's going bad. And Walmart can be really bad about that sometimes. So, you, you really got to watch them. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this. And uh, just enough for us. I'm not going to do anything major. I'm just going to cut some off over here on the side. Uh, I don't know. Maybe a quarter piece of it or so. Something like that rest of this, I'm going to take it, sometimes I cut it up, but I'm not going to do that today. I'm just going to put it in this bag. Just put it in your bag after you, you know, make sure your water's off real good. It's going to feel a little damp, but that ain't, it never bothers mine. So, get that down in there. I hate the way they're making these bags with these little creases down here at the ends. I liked them when they were just flat and didn't have that in there. <laughs> I guess it's good for certain things, but some of the things I use them for, it just ain't good for, and I can't seem to find any of the other ones. And So, I guess that's just how they're making them nowadays. I don't like it. All right. Squeeze the air. Just fold your bag up against your lettuce like this, and go ahead and zip it for the meantime. Okay. Flip it over like that, right? I opened the end of my bag, just a little spot. You only want it opened enough for a straw to go in it. And I just use like a milkshake uh, straw. I put it in there, probably right about halfway down the bag. And then I zip up the straw, or I zip it up against the straw, what I had opened. Okay? I'll show you what I'm talking about in just a second. And if the air comes back out, don't worry about it. See how I got that down at the end? I opened up just a little uh, end down there just to put that straw in. And then I've got it, like I said, I don't know, a little over halfway down in the bag. So once you get it to that point point, you zip it up, you're going to suck all this air out. Watch this bag, okay, as it starts to pull around this lettuce here when I get this air out, okay? Here we go. Now, when you get to that point, you got the air out, you've got to close the end of that bag right away. As soon as you pull that straw out, you got to get that bag closed because you'll lose your air or you'll lose it and then you'll have to redo it again. Now, when you put this in the refrigerator and you go to use it, you're going to have to do it again. And sometimes if you put them in there like this in maybe a couple days, you may notice that it may need it again. 
it's helpful. It really, really, truly is. But see how that uh, did? It almost acts like one of those uh, little, um, what do they call them? A sealer, one of them bag sealers. Same thing, same idea. I just did it myself with a straw. All right, so let's get our little, uh, let's get our lettuce I cut off here. And we're just going to dice it up. All right. We've got our lettuce diced up and we got it into a bowl. We'll put this lid on here like we did tomato. And I'm going to put it in the refrigerator. And our hamburger is just about done. So I'll take it off, strain it. And I'll bring y'all back and we'll get these made up. So give me just a minute. All right, y'all. So what I've done, I've got my hamburger and it's still in my mesh strainer. Um, you're going to need scalding hot water when you do that and, and get it drained. It has to be super duper hot. I've got another pot under here because we're going to transfer this over into this pot. I want to show y'all how fine this is. And then I'll rinse my pot out on the bottom because some of that may have still been trying to run through some of the water. So I still push on it. When, when your hamburger gets to where it's cool enough for you to handle, take your hand and do this and press on it. You want to get every bit of that excess water out of your burger. I mean, you really, really, really want to make sure that it is straight. Some of y'all may say, well, it's dry. Well, it's not going to be that way once you get your taco seasoning packet in here and a little bit of water. Okay? I will tell you that. It's not going to be that way. Um, but it doesn't have near as much fat in it as it did before. And this was the 80-20. And you can tell, if you if you notice, you can tell by looking at it, it's not greasy. It's not greasy at all. Look at that. And see how fine that is? That's what I was telling you all about stirring your hamburger. You continue to stir it, it'd be fine like that. But if you like it chunky, then don't stir it as much. And you're going to transfer your hamburger, your boiled hamburger, you're just going to transfer that over into another little pot. Now, some of this at the bottom, and, you know, you can't get it all. It sticks into the the mesh strainer. I mean, you can sit and tap it, but you probably make a mess. I don't worry about stuff like that. That's not a big deal to me. So, I'll wash that out. All right. Once you get your hamburger put into a pot and you've got all that water out of it, what we're going to do, and, you know, you don't have to do this. I do. But I add a, a little bit, and when I say a little bit, and it's not going to be a lot, but I add very little bit of, uh, I'll put a little bit of garlic powder in here, and then I'll put a little bit of the onion powder in here. But now the taco seasoning packet, it's already got some seasonings in it, and it's probably got the garlic and onion powder anyway. I just add the extra, just to help give it that little bit of a, a kick. So... I'm going to add a little bit of black pepper, nothing big, just a little bit, because this is mild taco seasoning, and it's already got a little bit of heat to it, so unless you'd like your hamburger meat to be really hot, then I wouldn't add but just a little bit, and it depends on what kind you're using, you know, they even got hot if you want it, garlic powder, a little bit, much of that and onion powder and that's it nothing big y'all nothing big i'm telling you it'd be too much if you add too much stir that in there get that in there good take your taco seasoning packet sprinkle it in there pour it in there stir that in your mix or stir that in your hamburger just stir it in there this is how I do mine. I want to make sure that that seasoning packet gets all over my burger before I add any water. So I want to make sure it's all coated well with that taco seasoning packet before I add my water. That's how I do it. You can do it after you heat it up, however y'all want to do it. It just seems like it gets it, um, it's even, evenly coated. So that's why I like to do it that way. So we're going to add our water. Now it says three quarters of a cup, right? We're going to start out with a quarter. And we're going to see what that looks like. So let me get a quarter of a cup of water. So we're going to put a quarter cup of water in here. And we're going to see how that makes it. Stir it in. 
Now, it's not going to be enough that's still too crumbly in there. So we may have to actually just add one more of the quarters of a cup. There's the second quarter. I think that's going to be okay. If it looks like we need any more, I'll add some more, but I don't want to make it too runny. But I'm still thinking, y'all, we may need a little more water. But let's do this. Let's take it over to the stove. Let's put it on there. Let's get it heated up, and let's see what it looks like then. Sometimes when the, when the mixture heats, if there's any excess water in the hamburger, sometimes you, you can't get it all out. I mean, it's going to be impossible, but you can get a lot out. If there's any excess water in this burger, it's going to pull it out. When you turn the heat on, you get to cooking it. So I want to see what it does first before I add any more water. So we've only added two quarters of a cup. So let's do that. I'm going to put it on the stove, and then I'm going to see what it does, and I'll bring you all right back, okay? Just a second. Okay, y'all, I've got you over here at the stove. So this is, I got my middle burner uh, on right here. So I'm just going to heat it up. I'm not going to leave it on high. I'm going to turn it down, I don't know, medium, something like that. And I'm going to come back here in a minute, and I'm going to check it out, okay? So give me just a minute, and I'm going to put a lid on it, and I will be right back. Okay, y'all, this is starting heating up some. You know, we are going to need a little more water, more than I thought. I guess I really uh, got the water out of the hamburger pretty good, because usually the heat will kind of pull that uh, water out of that hamburger, what's left in it, and it's usually a little bit too too watery. So, I have got only an eighth of a cup in here. This is the quarter of a cup, but I just got half, so it's a, that is uh, an eighth. So, we're going to add it. I added that eighth of a cup. And we still may need another one. So we'll see. So by the time it's said and done, y'all, we actually may use the three quarters of a cup. <laughs> I didn't realize I got that much water out of the hamburger, but I guess I did. But that's a good thing. So it's looking pretty good. I mean, we'll see. We'll see where we're at in just a minute. It's got to heat up a little bit more than that before I really know. So um, I'm going to let it heat. And when it does, I will be back. All right, y'all, it's heated up. Um, I'm going to take another eighth of a cup of water and put it in here. So if I use it all, we will have three quarters. <laughs> but honestly, I didn't think we'd need it all. Let's just use a little bit of that. Let's see what happens. Because that may be just enough. Because I'm trying, y'all, I'm trying not to add too much water to this. Because, like I've said, I don't want my wraps to be soggy. Because, you know, when you lay meat like that on one, it's going to make it a little bit that, you know, softer on the bottom. But that's that's just the way it is. Let's just go ahead and add the rest of what we got. So, recap. We went ahead and added the three quarters. Just so y'all know, we did add three quarters. Because apparently I got out a lot of the water out of the hamburger and what I realized, which I, if I can do that, that's great. Because I now always have to add this, you know, the water with the seasoning, taco seasoning packet. So, all right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on low. And I'm just going to let it sit there and just kind of simmer for a minute and let those seasonings and, and the taco packet and all that just uh, simmer in together. Okay, y'all. So, we've got the meat ready. And uh, I think it's going to be okay. It might be a little thinner than I like it for a wrap, but it'll be all right. So what we're going to do, I'm going to pour it in one of these bowls because this stuff can stain. So I'll just use these bowls for that. Don't you love how I use my Christmas bowls year round, y'all? <laughs> I do my all my stuff that way. We're going to pour it in here so we have it in a bowl. Then we can store it back in a refrigerator with it lid. So now we got that in there. Our meat is ready to go. And there we have our taco meat. We'll put a lid on it. Now I'm just going to leave it set here for a few, just for a few minutes. And then I'm going to start getting a wrap out. And I'll show y'all how to do this real quick. Okay. So I'll be right back. So take your wrap, lay it on your plate. It's totally up to you how you want to put your stuff together. I take, I start out with just a little dab of sour cream. And I rub that all over my wrap. 
and make sure you get it evenly spread out all over your, your wrap. I like to add my sauce. Now this is hot. I've got some mild, but I'm not going to fool with all that. I'm trying to open them and all. I'm going to add me a little sauce, but I'm just going to do a very little bit because I don't want to burn up from it. <laughs> and I will. So once you do that, you can take your sauce, rub it in with your sour cream, and then you're going to take your taco meat. I'm going to stir mine up. And I'm going to add, there's a little over a tablespoon right there. And I kind of spread mine out. I only like so much of it on it. I don't like to overdo it with my meat on my wrap. So that right there should be plenty for what I need. Now I'll get me another spoon. And I just sort of spread this out a little bit. I mean, we've got to roll it so you don't want to spread it all over. I guess you could if you want to, but I don't. After you get your meat patted down, then you're going to take you a few tomatoes. But yes, my hands are clean. And take you some lettuce. Sprinkle on there. Okay, so we got that on there. Now let me work my hands because i got to get my cheese. Take you some cheese of whatever your all's preference is or whatever kind you like. Sprinkle it on top of everything. And I don't add a humongous amount of cheese, but I add enough. And y'all, that's basically all there is to it. I mean, you can call it a soft taco if you want to, but I will tell you that the soft taco tortillas, they have a whole lot more carbs in them, and they are a lot smaller. Now just take your wrap and just wrap it. I probably got a lot of stuff in here, y'all. So what I'm going to have to do is just sort of fold it over like this and bring this other side up since I've got quite a bit on here. Just bring it up there and fold it over to the other side just like you would if you were making a soft taco. Really nothing any different. And that should stick together with all the ingredients in there. It should be all right. And that's how you make a taco low carb wrap. So anyway, y'all, we have made our low carb taco wraps. They're going to be delicious. And um, listen, if you don't mind, go to Facebook and like, share, and follow my page. I would greatly appreciate that. If you don't mind, head over to YouTube and like and subscribe. And as always, hit that bell so you can receive all notifications from Old Fashioned Southern Cooking. So anyway, y'all, I'm going to let y'all go, and I'm going to sit down, me and my husband and I, and we're going to enjoy us a low-carb taco wrap. So listen, y'all, stay safe out there, but always remember to keep God in your heart and God in your life. Bye, y'all.